Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60 and an update on the budget 335, which is the broken budget 335 at the moment. Uh, firstly, apologies for the delay in getting this video to you. We have just been crazy busy. Um, we had a container of stock arrive, which unfortunately that's how we pay the bills. So that does take priority over the videos and also attempting to do rod bearings on an S62 on a Friday night in a rush for the first time. Probably wasn't the best idea, but we just had a few things on, uh, which I haven't been able to get to this yet. Also bought a mower. Uh, anyway, the N54, now this thing, now I need to own up, I actually made a mistake. Now that last video where I did the compression test, what I was trying to do was emulate what I did with the compression test last time I tested it. Now last time I tested it, I did have Dave with me and we were cranking it for about five seconds and that's how long it took for the needle to stop going up on the compression gauge. So that's what I was trying to do the other day, but because I was in the car, I couldn't actually see what the compression gauge was doing. So it may have gone up higher if I kept cranking it, admittedly, yes, but I was thinking I'll just do it for the same time I did last time and then I can compare the results to what I got the first time I checked compression. Now in that video, I did say I was getting 190 PSI pretty much across the board last time I checked, which was right. Like, I think one might have been 185, most were 190 and then one was 195. However, there was a big difference when I did that last compression test. I did it while I was doing the walnut blasting and of course I had the intake manifold off. So I've cocked up there because I didn't open the throttle. But when I did it the other day, I'm like, well, I didn't touch the pedal last time, so I won't touch the pedal this time. Um, so yeah, it would have been trying to suck through the throttle body, which may have affected why all of the other cylinders were reading 150 versus the 190 last time. So working on that logic, I'm guessing that all of the cylinders are fine except for cylinder four, which is low on compression. So and I actually realized that when I was editing the video last week. Um, and that's why I haven't just jumped straight into swapping the engine, although it's probably going to be the case. But maybe this is an issue with a valve. I don't know. Crack piston ringland. I don't know. So what I also managed to obtain on the weekend is a boroscope. And I've just plugged it in and I'm going to bring you guys along for the uh, adventures down into the cylinder to see if we can see any, any evidence inside the cylinder of what's causing it to be low on compression. Um, something that nobody mentioned in the last video, spark plug number four is a darker colour to all the other spark plugs. So I'm assuming that that darkness is, well, I'm assuming it's running, it's got oil in the cylinder and it's stained the tip of the plug. I'll put up a picture so you can see what's going on. But then again, part of me thinks that you can get brown tips on your plugs if you're running super lean um, and I guess we'll find out if it's running lean or what the hell's going on once we put the camera down in there uh, so let's just go and do it I guess I really want to get driving this thing again now I've got the cam the laptop set up I've just got to plug the boroscope in um, and I should be able to hopefully record that screen of what goes down in the, the uh, what goes down I've already got the spark plug out that is that brown tip spark plug all the other plugs that pulled out were white so yeah, I'm gonna, I'll try and set you guys up so you're watching what's going on from the aerial view and we'll get into it. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I've just plugged it in. Actually, I'll just switch it over. I think he said, uh, I've had instructions on how to use this. Okay, um, that's the boroscope there. I'll start recording so you guys can see what the boroscope sees. And you can just see that it's looking up at the GoPro. Now I've actually got this attachment on there. Hopefully the GoPro can see it. And it, it, it's just a little mirror. I'm gonna take that off because I wanna have a look at the, the piston first off. So I'll take the mirror off and the mirror just gives it a 90 degree vision. There we go. Let's not lose that. Okay, so let's go down into the cylinder. Through the spark plug hole. Okay, I've got the brightness on the camera set at full brightness. And unfortunately with the sunlight on this laptop screen, I can't see it very well, but the piston looks very, very black. Very black. So there's a lot of carbon buildup on that piston by the looks of things. Can we see any cracks in it? Oh. All right, just lift it up a bit. Can't see any glass, but if it was cracked, the piston would be, there'd be no compression at all. But it doesn't look like it's running lean. Lean, it would be nice and clean. So it's not a lean issue. There's just a ton of carbon buildup. What is that? It's a bit of a line in it, it could be anything. I'll just try, I'll pull the boroscope out again. I'll just try and kink it a bit so we can look at the, the edge of the piston. If I can get it in the hole again. Okay, that is in. 
and I can see the edge of the piston, right. Won't twist though. Basically what I'm looking for is any evidence that the, the ring lens cracked. I don't know if you'd see it on the very top section. It all looks pretty good. Okay, I, it's very hard to see, and I, you guys are probably going to see, see it better than what I can actually see on the screen. Um, but yeah, I can't see anything weird with the piston at all. The piston looks pretty, oh, it's oily, but not, not bad. Um, I'm going to put the little mirror on, and I'll just see if we can see what the bore looks like. So if it's gotten hot, and I haven't noticed, it should have... So if it's gotten hot, and basically the piston's expanded, it would have damaged the bore. And of course that could cause it to lose compression if the bore's damaged. So let's see if we can see what the bore looks like. Okay, so we'll just so you know what's going on. So that there, that's a valve. This is actually upside down. If you can imagine the boroscopes diving into the cylinder. So that's a valve. Ooh, what is that? That is the very top of... So you can see the valve that sticks down into the head. You can see the head gasket. And then the top of the block. So I'd say what's in the middle of the screen right now is the top of the block, the part that the piston doesn't actually get up to or the rings don't get up to. And then you can see the cross hatch section there. The cross hatch looks good in that part. Let's see if we can do some rotating. Hmm. Ah. There's a couple, you can see a couple of, there'll be vertical lines, which would be piston wear. To be honest, that's not terrible. That doesn't look like a piston's grabbed. The fact you can still see the crotch ha cross hatching to the side of those vertical lines isn't too bad. Cross hatching. And because the spark plug's hole's not in the middle, there will be a section. Ah, see, it sort of gets a bit dark. Oh, what was that? So we've still got really good cross hatching. Okay, there's a little bit of vertical lines there, but again, not terrible. And we've nearly done a 360. Okay, so we're back to those vertical lines there, but I mean, that's not, it's not good. But that doesn't look like a piston that's gotten hot and, because you can still see the cross hatching beside it. Normally it'll wear through the cross hatching pretty quickly. Um, let's just get it back up. Oh, now the boroscope's stuck. This should be good. Ow, you're back. Okay, I'm getting old. Well, uh, unfortunately, I didn't find anything useful with that. Now, I've got to admit, that's the first time I've looked inside an engine with a boroscope. Um, and the picture quality was much worse than what I was expecting. Maybe it's because it's one of the cheap eBay boroscopes. The guy I borrowed it from said I think he paid like $40 for it. 
Um, so yeah, let me know if that is a crap boroscope or if you can recommend a better one, because I wouldn't mind having one just to keep, actually. I guess the fact I haven't found anything definitive, well, unless you guys notice something that I haven't noticed in the footage, um, next step's gonna be a leak down test to see, to see what it is. Yeah, it just sucks. Uh, I was kind of hoping that I could find out what it was today and not be in this limbo stage of what's going to happen with it. Now, the, the car is not dying. The car is definitely not leaving the channel. Um, whether I repair this engine, like if it's something simple in the head or I don't know, if it's something that I can repair quickly, I won't even swap the engines. But if that engine does need something major doing to it, the engine is going to come straight out of the E90 and we're back on the road relatively quickly. That's the plan anyway. But yeah, I guess I need to find out what it is. We've just got a lot going on at the moment, which is why it's taken a bit longer than it should have. Regarding things going on at the moment, we'll have an update as well, probably tomorrow on the S62, which is still on the hoist. Yeah, uh, putting it back together hasn't gone to plan. We actually made a bit of a mistake in the, um, well, not a mistake, but we forgot to get a part that we really should have got. But we'll have a video on that tomorrow. And there's also been a few people ask about what brand of bearings have gone in. So we've got to do a video on that. But yeah, if you've got any thoughts on what's going on inside this engine from what you've seen in that boroscope footage, now keep it in mind, looking at it on the laptop in the laptop in the daylight, I couldn't see a lot. So if I do notice something else in the edit, if I get a chance, I will add it in. But if not, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully that footage does look better once I get it off the laptop though. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, sorry we didn't have a resolution on what's going on with this low compression, but yeah, as I said at the start of this video, I'm pretty confident it's just gonna be cylinder four that's the problem. Um, the others, I bet if I uh, had the throttle wide open, we'll get that extra little bit of compression that we had last time, or if I cranked it for a bit longer maybe. So let's assume it's cylinder four. The cylinder walls look okay. A Little bit of vertical marks, but um, I'd say that's sort of normal-ish, maybe for an engine that's got 150 k's on it. And yeah, even where it's got the vertical marks, it hasn't worn through the cross hatching at all. So, oh look, I don't know. I'd, there'll be some people that know more about it than I do. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, Team N54. It will live on. It will. And it needs to live on quickly because I miss it. And it's filthy. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on tomorrow's video. Peace. It's been out here for five days. It's so dirty. I don't like it. I'm gonna wash it even though I'm not driving it. That's the type of guy I am. Team N54.